And when my assistant would come in the morning at 11, she would get a tall uh, cappuccino from Starbucks. So the morning you said this, <laughs> she's still in bed at 11. Oh. And I, go, I go inside the room. I said, hey, Howard's talking about you on the radio. And said, so what did she say? So I handed her the black card. $10,000 cash and a, a, a cappuccino from Starbucks. And I said, he said you hit the check. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, my goodness. He's paying out like a one-armed bandit. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah, gee, why would he say that? Oh, my <laughs> <laughs> All right, Sam. Good okay, luck, buddy. Right. Let Give us an update. Hey, she's wonderful. Please, don't everybody tell her that I said horrible things about. Yeah, all right. She, she is okay. very nice. Yeah, she's she beautiful. Really nice. Beautiful yeah. girl. Playboy Playmate. Really cool, too. Yeah. yeah. All right. Take care. I have never heard a story like that in my tale. life. Good night. Yeah. I think he just, he freaked out when the he was dying. fooled him again? I mean, well, no, he was freaking out. I, I talked to him. He was, like, totally freaking out. But he didn't, he married her after he got well. Hmm. All right. Hey, Johnny boy, you're on the air. Hey. Hey, now. How you doing? Hey. Hey, your buddy just tore you a new butthole, man. Who's my buddy? Yeah, I'm his. Oh, oh who no even buddy. cares? Oh, my God. I'm talking about the, your spy at Gold's Gym and <laughs> how you've dropped your wife after all these years, just like he predicted. Your hideous wife, I think he called her. <laughs> well, if my wife is so gold. hideous, then what, first of all, let me let me just tell you something. Yeah. Number one, Imus never talked about anyone till I hit New York City. That's oh, number one. So he's got his whole act for me. Even number two, this part of the act. Number two, the, my spy at Gold's Gym called up and said he saw Imus working out. The guy doesn't even bench. Oh, he benches the bar. Anytime he wants to challenge me to a benching, any contest, climbing ropes, running, anything. And it was no spy. It was just a guy who called us who saw him at Gold's Gym. He said well, it was pathetic. It, this is the way he spun it out. Secondly. Who cares what Imus is doing? Secondly, yeah. anything about me and my wife, he, he can't even comment. He totally ditched his children. He totally ditched his wife, left her in Cleveland when his children were young. So if I'm bad, he's 50 what times he? worse. Oh, well, the, the way he put it is, you know, you dropped your bimbo or you dropped your hideous wife and ended up with a bimbo hanging out in the Hamptons. Yeah, well, let me tell you something. <laughs> Nothing he hasn't done and worse. Yeah. And by the way, I don't go around calling people niggers. Well. That's where we, we differ for sure. Uh, just tell him, tell him I know everything about him. He better shut his, his well, cake hole. Anything, Didn't you know? he fire a guy with a family to hire a girlfriend? Yeah, I'll tell you, I'll tell you the story of Al Rosenberg, a guy who worked for Imus for 10 or 15 years. <laughs> Was the backbone of the show, quite frankly. Yeah, who did a ton of voices on the show. Imus fired him one day because his bimbo girlfriend wanted to become a voiceover person, and he paid her double scale for voices she couldn't even do. Mm. Uh, you want to get into the history of Imus, it's embarrassingly bad. Um, the alcoholism, the rejection of his family. You know, he moved, his kids lived in Cleveland the whole time he lived in New York. He didn't see them, he didn't do anything. And when they came to visit, didn't he give them to his assistants? Yeah. <laughs> and by the way, if and, and let me get defensive about my ex-wife, who I, I think is a beautiful woman. I'll take my first wife and his first wife and put him in a beauty pageant and I guarantee you my wife will ha win hands down. It isn't even about that. Let's go wife find, his present wife. Let's go find Harriet Imish and, and, and see what the hell she looks like. Yeah. Talk about hideous. What? You, you know what? You should hammer him because I'm looking at the transcript. Yeah. He, calls, he goes, so my little bitch, Howard Stern, he's been I-Man's bitch forever. Oh, oh, please. This is all your... This Lingo. is my. This is even he my rap. Talk like that. Yep. This is even my rap. He was talking about how Mel likes him better than you. Yeah, because and, you he know. inducted Mel into the. Uh, yeah, you know why he likes thing. Mel better? Because I'm is safe and I'm not. Yeah. <laughs> of course, well, I. Of course, Mel likes him better. Pretty pathetic. It's awful, and and even saying "little bitch" that's my whole right. rap. Yeah, he doesn't talk like that. Yeah, he wishes he could be me. Hey, we love you, man. First of all, I'm young. Well, younger than wow. him. Good looking. Good looking. Yeah, exactly. It's all relative. Better looking than him. Better looking than him. It's all relative. <laughs> and, and both your lungs are intact, right? Yeah, and, and by the way, I'm an innovator. He's not. Yeah. And that's the bottom line. And all these guys are so jealous. I'll tell you what. Oh, I got to take a break. I'll I'll tell you what after, after I get back. Break. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thanks. Mm. Old buzzard.
I yeah, mean, the nerve. Yeah, him up? You know, it's just like yeah. somebody gave him a shot whatever morning he said that. The nerve of this guy. The most boring guy on radio with his two share, thrown out every market he's in. Not even relevant anymore. Looking at, looking at take me on. It's the worst thing you could do is take me on. Good. Aside from, and, and worst of all, that goddamn home he built in Arizona taking money from cancer kids. Yeah. Uh, we're going to buy up all the land around my house and devote it to cancer children. Yeah, well, wait a second. I'll, I'll get some free help <laughs> from the kids. You don't make enough money? You need your audience to buy up all the land around your ranch? Let me ask you something. If you bought a ranch, Robin, wouldn't yeah. you like it if you had no neighbors and you owned the land for miles around? That's why you get a ranch. Yeah. So he's he's doing it because he's so worried about kids. Not a liar. He doesn't... Kids. Oh, yeah. The kids work this ranch. <laughs> this guy couldn't care about... He reduced a, a black secretary to tears as he called her nigger. How does he care about kids? A liar. If he cared about kids, how come he never visited his kids in Cleveland? Yeah, he cares about other people's <laughs> kids as long as they're dying, I mm. guess. If my kids had cancer, I'd have them visit me at my ranch. But uh, if you had cancer, wouldn't you want a vacation not to work at the Imus? Yeah, yeah, the Imus Ranch. We get to work. We treat them like every other kid. Oh, yeah, yeah they pull their own weight around. Hey, old goat, I got three weeks to live. I really don't feel like spending <laughs> one of those weeks working your ranch, you stupid bastard. You know, Jerry Lewis doesn't ask the kids to go to work for him. We have 11 Steinways for the kids. Yeah, we bought 11 pianos <laughs> for my house so the kids could play piano. <laughs> Thanks for your donation. Because a lot of cancer kids are taking piano lessons. <laughs> they can't wait. They need to play on the best piano. I want to learn for the month I have left how to play piano. Yeah, it's the one thing a nine-year-old cancer kid needs is a Stein. Right. Yeah. You lying bastard. Go build a barn. It's good for your cancer. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Biggest scumbag on two feet. Don't even start with me, because I'll start. I'll, I'll have spies all over the place reporting on your every bowel movement. <laughs> you diapered bastard. You old goat. How dare you. I don't even bring up my name. You're not even allowed to mention my name. I'll pummel your ass. Stupid ass. How about the boxing match you just had? Yeah, Where'd you get I know, that idea? That. This is the guy who used to come into my office every single day that I worked at NBC and take... Oh, I, I just want to watch how you do it. I want to watch how you notes. work. I'm taking notes. No shame. Why don't you admit that to the audience? How you do that, you stupid fool. He never, uh, your bitch never uh, attended your meetings. Yeah, I never sat in a meeting in your <laughs> office, you stupid ass. Your bitch never sat in on your show. Yeah. Well, whose bitch is who? And guarantee you, buddy, put us on an island, you're my bitch. Because you can't kick anyone's ass, <laughs> you old fart. It's over for you. I'll just kick you in your lung. Fired out Rosenberg. And then, and then the kicker was he fired Al, and then he hired him back because we had Al on our show doing characters, and then he asked Al to do the characters the from our characters, show. Yeah. Holy mackerel! What a what a what a history this guy Some has. Bitch. Yeah, I'm the bitch. All right, we're going to take a break. We'll be back right after these words. The Howard Stern Show. Show. Oh my God. I'm or this is the controversial Howard Stern radio show. A man many consider vulgar and racist. Let's not get ridiculous. Show. All right. I had some chick scheduled here to tell us how to have an orgasm, but I young, blew it off for young, it. Young, wet bitches. Yes, young, wet bitches. Why did you blow it off? Well, we'll get to it in a minute. I mean, you know, I just have stuff to talk about, you know, and I'm not mm. getting to anything. Well, with Sam and his problem. Yeah. <laughs> I like this. Uh, I'm looking forward, as I said, to Paris Hilton's TV show tonight. The mm -hmm. I forget what it's called, but it's on Fox. Simple Life. Simple Life. Lionel Richie's daughter is the other chick in it, but she's kind of getting ignored because she's kind of chubby and not that hot. Yeah, people are forgetting yeah, about her. They say she's uh, Nikki's or his, Paris's best friend. I don't believe it. Yeah, and it seems kind of sad anyway because, like, they had her on Entertainment Tonight, and she goes, I'm Michael Jackson's goddaughter. She's defending Michael Jackson. She goes, 
I've never seen him do anything inappropriate with kids or... And I'm like, well, of course not. Yeah, he's not going to do it in front of you. Yeah, you're a chick. Hey, he's he doesn't not going to do it in front of Macaulay Culkin. You know, all yeah. these people who are coming forward. In fact, the guy, the Wayne, what is that guy on MTV who has the dance show? The Wayne Robson Project or whatever yeah. it is. He used to sleep in the bed with Michael Jackson. Yeah. He might have seen some things go no, down. No, no, no. He said nothing ever went on. He used to sleep in the same bed and nothing went on. Wow. Well. Yeah, and then uh, Michael Jackson's brother was saying that he doesn't sleep with the kids in the bed, that the kids sleep somewhere else. Right, Michael gives them his bed, but then there are people who are saying he slept in the bed, and even Michael has said he had Macaulay Culkin on one side and Kieran Culkin on the other side. <laughs> Hey, that's a sandwich. <laughs> I, don't <laughs> oh, red bitches. I don't care what you say, Robin. That's weird behavior. <laughs> so anyway, uh, I just think it's funny that Lionel Richie's daughter now is chiming in that she hasn't seen anything inappropriate going on. Yeah, I think he kind of. I think he can control it while you're around. Yeah, Lionel Richie's daughter. I don't. I don't know if she's been in the room with the dolls that go down the staircase and all that. She doesn't get to go to the secret room. <laughs> uh. Or party at the hotel. Right. There's no young wet bitches in there. Young wet bitches. All right, I got a letter from our program director in Vermont. And I read this to you because this happens to us so many times. Has this been printed out, the letter, guys? I don't know. I guess not. Yeah, it should be on the bottom of uh, the article. I got it. I just want to listen to your song. So this is from our program director in Vermont. I called earlier and left a message about the New York Times. And in fact, I was reading an article in the Post today saying how the New York Times got something wrong and they had to write a retraction about it. But this, you'll never get a retraction. Uh, I called earlier and left a message about the New York Times saying Stern was getting crushed in the Burlington, Vermont market. The New York Times ran an article, an inaccurate article, and the program director sends me the article. And in it is, it's about a coach who has a radio show in Vermont. His name is Coach Tom Brennan, and he's on with a guy named Steve Cormier. And the show is called Corm and the Coach. They compete with us in Vermont. Okay. Okay? We wouldn't even know about this. But it's a local coach competing with us. And uh, in the article, the coach brags and he says, we're crushing Imus and Stern. There's no doubt he's probably crushing Imus. It's Everyone crushes idea, Imus. Yeah. There isn't a show that doesn't crush Imus. In New York, he's in 27th place. So everybody crushes him. <laughs> you know, somehow they convince advertisers that it's worthwhile to advertise on Imus because they have really rich listeners, which is such BS. <laughs> it's such a bunch of yeah, crap. that one guy who's listening is just loaded. Yeah, you know what? M mail a letter to a rich guy <laughs> if, if, if you have to spend that much money to advertise on Imus' show. It's a complete waste of your money. It has absolutely no, no impact. You know what? On your commercial run, uh, if you hear this commercial... Uh, just say hello, and we'll give you $100 off. You won't get one taker. Call the guy by name. You can yeah. actually write his name in your ad. Yeah, so anyway, the guy makes the claim he crushes Stern and Imus in the market. And our program director says, "What? where the hell they get that? Here he goes. If person's 12 plus, he goes, here's the ratings. Oh, he shows ratings. Yes. Our program director does, uh, not the guy uh, in the New York Times. Stern has a 7.3. The coach and the Cormier have a 5.1. Okay. Men 18 to 34. Stern has a 20.2. The coach and the Cormier have a 4.5. Men 25 to 49. Stern has a 15.4. Coach and Cormier have a 9.5. Hmm. Men 25 to 54. Stern has a 13.7. Coach and Cormier have a 9.4. You get the idea. Even women, 18 to 34, it's Stern, 9.3, Coach and Comier, 4.0. Jeez. The Times article is totally, factually inaccurate when it comes to ratings. 
Now, they're going to defend themselves by saying they were just quoting him. Well, let me tell you something. That's not what they wrote, because I have the article. Ah. And let me and let me say something. The New York Times will never admit this, but it is the goddamn easiest thing. If a guy comes, if a New York Times reporter, and in this case, I'm going to mention the New York Times reporter. His name is Pete Thamel, who doesn't check anything, who doesn't <laughs> look into anything. He Just takes take anybody's word. word. If you go to a radio guy and you say, how you doing in the ratings? I'm killing everybody. That's what they all say. Imus will tell you he's killing everybody. He used to say he was number two. Yeah, he'd say he's right behind you. Yeah. At 27. Well, he's right. He is number two to me, <laughs> but he's actually number 27 in the yeah. market. There's a lot of number twos before him. Imus would just compare himself to me. He goes, well, I'm second behind Stern. Well, no, you're 27th behind Stern. <laughs> Light FM is doing better than you in the morning. <laughs> But New York Times reporters, for some reason, when it comes to entertainment or to anything like this, and this is true of most reporters, they will just take your word for it. When I actually say I'm number one, I'm actually number one. Uh, I can't tell you how many people claim to be number one, and they're not. I mean, it's unfortunate that Coach and Camier can't cop to the fact that they're not beating me. It's unfortunate that they can't admit it. Which they is, have respectable ratings. Why not just go with that? Yeah, certainly a 4.2 to my 20 point something <laughs> is respectable. A 4.5 to my 20.2 is very respectable. You can live with that. Yeah, live with it. <laughs> but the shame, uh, you know, okay, the coach is a liar, obviously, just a uh, flat liar. I wonder how really, his teams do. I mean, does he lie about he that? He shouldn't too? be allowed around children, that's for sure. If he's a liar like that. But the fact of the matter is, the guy has no honesty whatsoever. But let's forget about that. Where is the New York Times reporter who just goes, oh, this must be true? Because he told the me. the story that the coach inflates his ratings? <laughs> yeah, that's the story that the coach is such a freak that he can't bear the fact that he can't beat me in the ratings. But that would never be the story because, A, the New York Times is biased against me. That's number one. That's a shame. Because they're intellectuals and they think I'm crass. And secondly, most reporters do not check facts. And that's something you must know when you're dealing with the media. Nobody looks into anything. Except for maybe this show. Because we're actually worried <laughs> about being right. I'm sure that they get... You know how Captain Jenks gets into the news programs and pretends to be people and gives quotes and so forth? I'm sure that the newspaper is the victim of that, too. Hmm. You just don't get to see it, and nobody says, ha, 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 balls on your chin at the end of it. <laughs> they should, though. <laughs> Here's the article. It goes, um, Brennan is on the classic rock station CVPFM with Steve Cormier from 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. weekdays, unless, unless basketball gets in the way. Carmen the coach, crack wise on the day's news, deliver early morning prank calls to opposing coaches in the America East Conference and crush Howard Stern and Don Imus in the local ratings. <laughs> crush! Crush us! Now, I guarantee you he crushes Don Imus. Everyone crushes Don Imus. But um, how does a New York Times reporter write... Excuse I mean, me. wouldn't you think to look that up if you say, I'm crushing Stern? Yeah, look That's it up. That's something to look up. Yeah, say, well, let's see if the guy's for real. That's or pretty amazing. see how bad it is. You want to see who's crushing Stern. That's and why wouldn't he have been recruited to New York if he's crushing Stern? Yeah, why Why? Uh, why not get this guy why right up to the big leagues? Why you across the country? Yeah. I, tell you, I just did stand-up up in Burlington, Vermont. And there's certain places where you go, you could just tell the show is huge. And that's that's a place where they love it. Yeah, well. And no one brought up the coach and the fewer to me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no one came up and said, you're great, but the coach and the fewer yeah. are really good. Now, uh, Pete Thamel, T-H-A-M-E-L. I think that's how you say it. Pete Thamel. Not Pete Hamill. Thamel. <laughs> no, not Pete Hamill. <laughs> yeah. This is Pete Thamel. <laughs> uh, this is uh, just another example of how reporters don't do their homework. And Pete, shame on you. You really need to get it together. You really need to check your facts. It's just odd to me. I think if a guy started saying to me, I, I went in the ratings, I go check the ratings. Right. You know. Show me. You're beating Stern? Oh, my goodness. Let me take a look at that. Yeah. Yeah, Scott, you're on the air. Hey, Howard. Uh, a friend of mine I discovered was a longtime Imus fan. I couldn't believe that. And uh, I slowly converted him to uh, to a fan of yours with my uh, 
Leatherbound Bible, also known as Miss America. Yeah, well, I mean, come on. There's no comparison in the shows. I mean, it's just that funny. Thank you. No problem. It's just silly. Uh, I don't even spend a minute thinking about it. Hey, Dan, you're on the air. Go ahead. Welcome to the show. Hey, and by the way, before Dan uh, gives us his comment, would you like to win $20,000? Sure. How do I do that? All right, I'll give you an easy way to do it. We're doing a contest starting Monday morning. Mm -hmm. This is what you need to do to compete. You have to be completely available from Monday morning until Friday morning. What do you mean? You have to be free to be in, that, in this contest. All right. You have to be free from Monday morning until Friday morning. Uh-huh. And then what? You have to open up your home to the show. Oh. Where we can actually videotape inside your house. And what are you looking for? Now, I'm not going to tell you. Uh -oh. Come down here. If this sounds interesting <laughs> to you. And I'll map, and I'll tell you what it is when you come down. Okay. And you can decide whether you want to do it or not. Is it something bad? It's something hard. $20,000. I'll tell you, so far I qualify. So do I. If you're interested, call 1-844-STERN. $20,000 courtesy of Stuck on You, the new comedy from the Farrelly Brothers, starring Matt Damon and Greg Kinnear in theaters uh, on the 12th. Of December. Of December. $20,000. You must be free from Monday until Friday. And you have to open up your home to the show. All right. And the 20 G's could be yours. I'll describe to you what you need to do when you get down here. How many people can compete? One. Only one? I'll choose one person. And that person only stands to win $20,000. Well, when I tell you what you have to do, you might not want to do it. <laughs> Got to be something good. That's a lot of that's a lot of cake. Oh my! Yeah. You know what I forgot to put on there one thing. You got to be twenty one. Oh yes. Yeah, I I would think so. <laughs> <laughs> when you hear what you have to do, you'll know. Yeah, you, you have really twenty one. You should really be over twenty one. <laughs> oh dear. Yeah. Twenty one. Sorry, Dan. Didn't mean to make you wait. Go ahead. Hey, that's all right, man. Why do you give all these douchebags any sort of airtime? You've been beating these guys for years. And no one even holds a candle to you, brother. No, I guess, I, I think my point is, I don't care about them. I care about the New York Times' uh, sense of fairness and reporting. Why do they just accept it? And that, it makes you wonder, what else are you reading in the New York Times that hasn't been fact-checked? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's all, That's all. It's, all, it's all hearsay. It's all rumors. Just like the Bible. Well, the news shouldn't be hearsay and rumors. It should be the news. It should be, it, all they have to do is go check very simply. It's almost like lazy journalism. And you Everybody's know, got their opinion. Everybody's got to have their opinion when they're just supposed to be reporting the facts. Right. And yeah. that's my point. When we don't know it, that's all I'm saying. I don't really care about the, these two idiots in Vermont. They're a pimple on my ass. You got everybody hands down, I mean, across the board. Yeah, and that wasn't my point. If, if, I'm, if you think that it's because... Oh, anyway, I made myself clear. Thank you. Darlene, go ahead. You're on the air. Hey, can you hear me? Yes, Darlene, go ahead. Oh, good. I just wanted to tell you to stop being such a loser about all the ratings. I mean, you have a great show. I understand, you know, why that would be upsetting, but... Why, does that, stop... make me a, why does that make me a loser? Because I point that out to you. Stop well, because being, you, you should know that you have the number a... one show. So I do know it? I have the number one show. The New York Times... What part of the show are you missing? Well, well, I'm on a cell phone, actually. keep breaking up. But I you wanted to get be... Daniel Carver's phone number. You shouldn't be a big loser. <laughs> What, what, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Look, all she really wanted was Daniel Carver's phone number. You know, yeah, I, don't... I could have got that from KC if you didn't put me on hold. All right, let me put you back on hold and see if we can hook you up with Daniel Carver. <laughs> you guys deserve each other. Hopefully you'll get initiated into the Ku Klux Klan. <laughs> and they'll shoot you in the head. They'll shoot you in the head. Hold on. I don't want to be in a... All right. I, why does she want... Da Darlene. Because my son is doing a science fair project, I mean a history fair project on the Ku Klux Klan. Oh, okay. Oh. Hold on. His perspective on it, because he's filled with so much hate. Who? Right, hold on. Who? It's Daniel, Daniel Carver. Oh, okay. Daniel Carver. Oh. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> I really want Daniel Carver's number. <laughs> That's what you want to do, put your kid in touch with oh, Daniel Carver. There you go. What you want? How old is your kid? He's 14. Oh, good. Perfect. He, that's a good age for him to be talking to someone like Daniel Carver. <laughs> that maybe would be guys, more, I mean, maybe you could go visit him. Yeah. Up in the mountains. No, definitely not. The uh -oh. man is very sick, and you know that's something that's going to be portrayed in his paper that he's working on. Son, what's your robe size? <laughs> Hold on. 
Um, yeah, Carlo, go ahead. You're on the air. Yeah, um, just make a left out of here, okay? Hello, Howard. Yeah. yeah. I'm sorry about that, man. I was in the middle of directing a customer. Yeah, I was looking in the, in the, um, what do you call it, the Star Magazine. They're talking about Paris and Hilton hitting on the teenage son for a threesome. Yeah, I can't wait to watch that show tonight. Yeah, me neither. Yeah, I'm looking great. forward to that. Hey, here's a, uh, this is off of George Takei's website. Oh, yeah? It's just funny. He's promoting some book. Like when you go on the website, he <laughs> promotes a book. He wrote a book telling all. And he's selling it on the internet? I think so. Telling all. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, my name is George Takei, but you probably know me best as Mr. Sulu. <laughs> it's already funny. <laughs> yeah, you can stop right there. You Hello. already know me best as Mr. Sulu. Hello. I mean, even the music, right away, the music. Yeah, we caught him, we caught him by surprise. Uh, 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 Hello. No, uh, Hello, I was just doing... Something. I was just listening to the theme of Star Trek. <laughs> but, but, oh, hello. You, you caught me again do, waiting to go on a cruise. <laughs> Helmsman of the Starship Enterprise and Captain Sulu of the Starship Excelsior in uh. Star Trek. You know what? He is so funny because it really meant something to him to get the captainship of that stupid... St uh, Excelsior. Excelsior in that stupid movie. Yeah, which important. meant he wasn't on the Enterprise where all the action was happening. Yeah. They took him out of the movie, essentially, by making him the captain of the Excelsior. And he's proud. Well, I did get a promotion. <laughs> yes. I'm the captain of a ship you'll never see. I was in the fake military, and I uh, well, became a captain. Uhura didn't get her own <laughs> starship, did she? <laughs> do you? Do you? I have my own helmsman. starship, do you? <laughs> I'm the captain of the Excelsior. I was the helmsman. It wasn't like they made him captain of the Excelsior and did a whole spinoff about no. him. <laughs> they took him out of the movie. And one scene saying, I'm on the, um, the captain. Hi, I'm the captain now. I'm still waiting on the first draft of Star Trek Nine, the Excelsior. <laughs> I'm still here on the Excelsior waiting for them to make a movie about yes, me. Yes, uh, maroon. <laughs> and forgotten. Apparently, Essentially, they took me out of the movie. Apparently, they can't get a good director attached. The Excelsior saw combat. <laughs> Through the years, audiences have been able to follow my adventures on television and in feature films. And thanks... That annoying woman in the background who Wait. sings the Star Trek theme? Oh! <laughs> you want to just choke her. The audience hasn't been following his adventures. Oh, no, they have. <laughs> yes. Uh, you, you don't know anything about Star Trek lure. There's a lot of people following me, Robin. <laughs> <laughs> I suspect there's plenty. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I'm a little paranoid. I'm Has constantly... Has anybody ever said, I wonder what's going to happen to Sulu? Yes. Captain's log, star date 2345. <laughs> Still no cameras on the Excelsior. <laughs> <laughs> Still waiting for a cinematographer to show up. Starship Excelsior. Uh, I'm ready for my scenes. When you when you come on a, uh, a Starship cruise, I would hope that you would refer to me as Captain I'm now captain. He's as wacky as the people who follow him. <laughs> I wonder, does he correct everyone when they call him, you know, Mr. Sulu? No, I'm Captain Sulu. Captain Sulu. Yeah, actually, is. Yes, did you realize I was captain of the Excelsior? Uh, no, no one did. <laughs> In best-selling pocketbooks, novels, and audio tapes. But few people know about the adventure myself, the rest of the cast, and the Star Trek creative team lived behind the camera. In my new autobiography, To the Stars, I'll talk about meeting a young, idealistic producer named Gene Roddenberry, who had an idea for a new television show that would be set in the future on a spaceship. Fantastic. I can't wait to read that. A young Gene Roddenberry. Yes. Yeah. He barely had hair on his ass. A very young, wet Gene Roddenberry. A mere boy. If you a young, wet bitch. Young, wet bitch. <laughs> This coming year, there will be a lot written about Gene Roddenberry. Some of it will be flattering. Some of it will not. Oh. Into the stars, I will talk candidly about the man I knew. And it knew. Uh, candidly. <laughs> knew. I never heard a guy say knew. <laughs> Extraordinary and brilliant human being with grand dreams. <laughs> I'll talk about my relationship with my fellow cast members including the captain of the Enterprise, Bill Shatner. I'm the captain of the Excelsior. <laughs> he was the captain of the Enterprise. Uh, it is really starship etiquette not to talk about other captains, but 
in my new book, I will. <laughs> A lot has been said about Bill Shatner lately. Mostly by me. Mostly <laughs> by Bill himself. And uh, I will talk about a man whose talent I admired, but whose insecurities often made life on the set difficult. Oh, Ooh. I yeah. love it. Also, I'll review Casey's poster at CaseyPoster.com. <laughs> I'll talk about the rivalries and tension between the crew of the Enterprise and the early days of Star Trek. And I'll tell the story of the time we were all left waiting on the set as Captain Kirk and Mr. Spock engaged in... Oral. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's so funny? Leonard Nimoy and Bill Shatner didn't know there were rivalries going you know, on. <laughs> engaged in... Delicate negotiations over a publicity photographer. Ooh. <laughs> That's something I must read. <laughs> I'll tell you more about my imaginary friend of the Enterprise. <laughs> <laughs> Uhura Chekhov and I. <laughs> yes. Yeah. We're the, on the set. All the scrubs were waiting for <laughs> the two big stars. <laughs> Having lunch at the commissary with Uhura. Looking back on Star Trek and the people I've worked with, I see more than a collection of anecdotes, the captain's funny toupee, and a set oh, of egos. Oh, oh. Wow. For me, the people who made Star Trek were a diverse group. Each diverse. With their own talents and gifts. You have no idea how diverse I am. As well as flaws. Flaw. Together, I think we represent a vision Gene Roddenberry had for the human race, where we'll all make unique contributions to a journey we'll take together yeah. to a common... The, the cast couldn't even get along, let alone in the future, mankind is going to get along. Well, that was Gene's <laughs> whole dream, and he's proving that his dream is a sham. Yeah. I'll tell you about the time when Loren LeBlanca bit Scotty. Destiny. <laughs> a destiny we'll make on a voyage to the stars. I'm going to tell you about Bill Shatner's funny toupee. Wow. <laughs> a little know, bubbling huh? anger, huh? <laughs> I'm going to tell you how I've lived off Star Trek forever and ever. <laughs> his ridiculous hairpiece. <laughs> and I'll tell you about his ridiculous hairpiece. <laughs> which actually uh, once made a, uh, a, an appearance as a tribble. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll tell you more about the Star Trek brunch I'm hosting next week. <laughs> this captain, of course, Captain Sulu of Excelsior, had his own hair. <laughs> <laughs> Join me on my adventures. <laughs> He must have said adventure 50 times. <laughs> and I'll tell you of the adventure. <laughs> and the other adventure. And that adventure. We all had adventures. I wonder how honest he's going to be about his adventures. How about him? Forget the captain. Hmm. Tell me about him. No, I don't think we're going to be hearing much about that. <laughs> God knows what goes on there. I want to know about him behind the camera. Uh, young, wet bitches. <laughs> I'll tell you more about the Excelsior's fine exercise room. And what about that time we waited on the set while Leonard Nimoy and Bill Shatner had a discussion about a photographer? Yeah. That sounds juicy to me. <laughs> hey, Frank. Yeah. Hey, what's up? Listen, dude, uh, big fan, long time. Thank you. I'm watching uh, Monday Night Football last night, right? Yeah. Halftime comes on. You won't believe what they do. Dude, they have Doug Flutie's band against another quarterback from um, the Houston Texans. I can't think of the quarterback's name. Against his band. Yeah. They're totally stealing from you, dude. Everybody steals from you. Battle bands, again, you know, they, they must have, uh, Al Michaels must have listened to the Stern Show one day. Because I got I to steal that Doug Flutie gig that Howard was doing against all these famous people that come in. Now they're doing it every single Monday night at halftime. Are you kidding? One guy against another team. Now Doug Flutie beat this guy, so now Doug Flutie's going against another band. There you another go. Another NFL player doing his thing. That's word no call. I'm not, uh, you know, I'm not one to call in all the time. I've been listening since you were on NBC, but that pissed me off last night when I was watching the game. Yep. But they're doing it to him again. There I'd you go. I'd get on the stick, I'd call Al Michaels and say, yo, what's going on? Yeah, Just well, Just like you well, called well. the Collingsworth, you know, on uh, the NFL with Doug, uh, I mean, Dan Marino. You got to do the same thing. All right, thank you for the call. All right, bro. Well, if I whine about this stuff, everyone says I'm a baby. So I won't. I'll take the high road. I'm taking the high road, goddammit. Al Michaels is a fan, though. Yes, he is. Had to have heard that. Hey, uh, Jeff tapes the show every day. It's paying off. <laughs> Sounds like a good bit. Hey, Jeff, you're on the air. Hey, now. Hey, now. Hey, now. Hey, now. Hey now, she's gay. Hey now, hey, I'm calling because uh, 
we all know why Howard Stern repeat was on Letterman last night. Why? That's uh, because he was going up against Cruz, Tom Cruz. Oh, really? Well, Tom Cruise is the most boring interview ever. I mean, um, I mean, I don't know if that's the reason Letterman repeated my uh, appearance no, three weeks three weeks after I've been on. But um, I guess I'm complimented actually because that means uh, he enjoyed the appearance. I would imagine. I wouldn't sure. wonder when it'll be on next three weeks from now. <laughs> I think if they were smart, they'd run it every night. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know, the, uh, the, the a lot of people get excited when they hear. Tom Cruise is going to be on a show, but we've all been burned so many times when he's interviewed that he literally says nothing. He's a moron. I've never well, seen a dumber guy. He I don't know boring. how dumb he is, because if he is, he's covering it up, like I said, with a very big smile. Yeah, he smiles a lot. And a bug-eyed expression, and he constantly tells you how wonderful his life is. That's how he answers every question. But it's wonderful. I love my life. To yeah. prove your point, last night they had not, they ran out of stuff to say. So uh, he's talking about how he's gained weight with uh, martial arts training and, you know, he flexes a little bit. And then Jay Leno goes, you know, ch challenges him to uh, an arm wrestling match right there on the desk. This goes on for about, oh, a minute, two minutes. And Cruz isn't really getting anywhere. So he gets up, grabs some leverage, and he sticks his hiney out towards the crowd. And he's bent over Jay's desk. And they're going at it. And finally they give up as a draw, you know, oh, laughing boy. merrily about it. Wow. Sounds like good television. Uh, compelling. <laughs> Why don't they have a sword fight? Well, he already did that with Larry King. <laughs> oh, they did? You mean they did a penis battle? <laughs> they didn't do penises, but they took out swords and Larry King... Oh, no, no, I meant, I meant a oh, sword a real fight. sword fight. Yeah, like Larry King takes his out and... <laughs> I want to challenge you to a sword fight, Mr. Samurai. <laughs> Get out your sword. No, not that metal thing. <laughs> Our meat sword. <laughs> but it seems that he's challenging all of the talk show hosts because he fought Larry King. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and now he's fighting Jay Leno. Way to go. Well, obviously, Letterman knew what to do. You know, he, out of all the choices in the last few weeks, he could have put Madonna on there, but he knew who he had to go to. He had to go to the man. Oh, thank all you. Right. All right. Well, there you go. That's very nice. All right. We have to take a break. I got to get the voicemail. Then some chick's going to come on. She's an expert on how to pleasure yourself. I don't know if she's an expert for chicks or for dudes or what she's in here for, for live she's live and in no or in the no. phone okay. we can hang up on her if she sucks <laughs> and uh, dennis rodman's supposed to call in this morning isn't he uh sober now yeah i think a lot of guys who hang out with him are pissed because he's always getting sober and then he's not sober and i heard that this time it's you know He's, heard, he, he's hoping this one will take. <laughs> I heard John Sally or somebody was pissed because they vouch for him because he wants to go back and play basketball. Right. And then like two days later, he wrecked some guy's car or something. Yeah. So Sally was pissed because he put his ass on the line. I got to ask Dennis about that. Well, now I think that mm. he's he's again revealing himself to be ready. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to ask Dennis, are you really sober? <laughs> and he'll say yes. <laughs> you think Rodman needs money? Yeah. Oh, yes. Wow. Yes. He was making like six million bucks a year for a while. Yeah, well, somebody tells me he didn't invest. <laughs> or <Damn>. even watch. <laughs> uh, tomorrow, Simon Cowell will be here from American Idol, Mary Carey and Tabitha Stevens, Lawrence Taylor later this week, Billy Bob Thornton. I have to tell you, I hope what is happening <laughs> is london or great britain doesn't happen here they are absolutely overrun with these pop idols american these shows yeah they call it pop idol over there hmm. it's american idol over here i mean in england they don't call it american idol no they don't <laughs> they call it pop idol okay and there's 10 million of them now really there's not enough outlets for the idols everyone in the country is an idol it's a pop idol right they have actually more reality shows than we do, but I, they, the pop idols now join, make groups, you know, like the kids who don't win mm. become like a girl group. And so they're from pop idol whatever edition, and, okay. and they're everywhere. All right, let's, not, let's make sure that doesn't happen here. I, I, we're already having it with Kelly and Clay and all this stuff, but it's getting ridiculous. Well, I'll have you know that Justin Guarini's album did so bad that they're saying they canceled his tour and everything, didn't really? they? Really? Something like that. Well, thank goodness. I know his album did bad. I think they are officially done with him. And I hear he's bitter. He feels they didn't handle his record properly. Mm. You know. But he never won the contest anyway. 
All right, we got to take a break. We'll be back right after these words. The Howard Stern Show is when a person touches him or herself for sexual pleasure. The Howard Stern Show is considered a normal part of a person's sexuality. Many people listen to the Howard Stern Show. This includes men and women. Children often listen to the Howard Stern Show. <laughs> How would you like to win $20,000 right here on this radio show? We're doing a contest starting Monday morning. This is what you need to know. If you want $20,000, you have to be completely available from Monday morning until Friday morning. That's right. You have to be able to give us Monday through Friday. And you have to be able to open up your home to the show. That's right. With a camera. And be 21 or older. Those are the things you need to know. Come on down here. If you have those credentials. Come on down. Hey, come on down. If you're interested, call 1 800 44 Stern. $20,000 courtesy of Stuck on You, the new comedy from the Farrelly Brothers, starring Matt Damon and Greg Kinnear in theaters on the 12th of December. Yeah. So that's a big contest we have going on. I'm not going to tell you what you have to do. I'll tell you when you get down here. And if you're agreeable, we'll let you take a shot at the $20,000 prize. And that's that. I'm not even sure why I booked this next guest. She knows the best way for women to masturbate. She's a masturbation expert. How do you become a masturbation expert? My point is, like, any woman... Who has to become a masturbation expert? I mean, but, but any woman is a masturbation expert you, for yourself. You know right. how I you mean, like to I be don't touched. I understand what is a masturbation expert. Aren't we all masturbation experts? I would say so. Unless you're a complete freak. I mean, how. You can't pleasure yourself? Why would you have to teach a woman how to pleasure herself, Sadie? Good morning. That's a good question. Let me tell you. I get many, many uh, emails, I get calls, I get people reading my book that asked me for advice. I have been speaking with women for 20 years. Now, the women I, you speak to, are they in mental institutions? <laughs> be <retarded>. No. <laughs> are they retarded? So. <laughs> you know, Robin, you're right. You would, you would think so, but I'm telling you, the people that know how to self-pleasure, they're not the ones that are contacting me. And there are a few people that do, but there are many, many women. In other words, I'm not, a, I'm not a woman, Okay. but uh, I touch myself in a way that gets me off. Uh huh. What more do I need to know? Okay, well, most men know how to do that, Howard. You're absolutely right. Yo, and women don't? Are you telling me most women don't? There are a huge percentage of women that don't, Robin, yes. Wow. Yo, don't you think I have for, been... for the whole interview, don't you think she's an expert? Don't you think she should be doing it while she's, while she's doing this? <laughs> while she's talking, she should be doing it. You know, but Howard, I'm, a, I'm at a little because disadvantage. Because she's an expert. Because, yeah. Well, Come on, I just start got diddling. Done. Is she hot? <laughs> I don't know. Are you hot? I, well, I've been told I am. There's actually a steamy picture on my website for you. Oh, no kidding. Yeah, if you want to check it out. Hold on. Don't even give out your website yet so I can look at it first. Okay. Because if, if you give it out, then I'll never get on. <laughs> give it to the E guys so they yeah, can. I'll let you decide. Let's go, honey. Start diddling. Casey. Well, I just got done, so if you give me a second, I can get ready to go again. Did you really, really? just get done? Yeah, I just got done before coming on your show. So you're not like a porn star or anything. You're like no. a... Do you no, have a credential? I've I am not a Ph.D. I don't have a formal education on self-pleasuring, but I don't know if there's a school you can go to. My, my approach is that I'm the girl next door. I've been doing this for over 20 years. I've taught girlfriends and women and men about this for the last 10 years, and I've had so many uh, great responses, and what I tell people works. I've, I've written two books that are best-selling books. Do you make a full-time living as a masturbation expert? Yes, I do. You do? Wow. And would yeah. you, do you make over six figures? I'm working on it. So, I'm working on it. This has been an incredible business, and it all came out of my passion for self-pleasuring. And, and what I do you think, know that I don't? In other words, uh, do you teach men how to please a woman? Oh, you bet I do. Mm -hmm. I love turning men into sex gods. No. I'd actually like to teach you a thing or two. Oh, there she is. Let me see. What does that say? Oh, you're not bad looking. Any oh, other shots you. of you, or is that just it? Yeah, if you, if you go uh, inside and click on See Sadie, there's a whole slideshow of pictures of of people I've seen and throughout my career, like Jenna Jameson and some other fun porn stars I enjoy. How old are you? 33. Ever been married? Never been married. Got a boyfriend? I do have a boyfriend. Mm -hmm. Yes. I think maybe there was something wrong with you. Like These pictures must be heavily airbrushed. <laughs> so far, I like what I see. Well, can you guess my nationality? 
Yeah, well, no, let me see. You're, uh, you, got, you got some uh, Chinese in you. Oh, like an, very good. You got a little Chinese and a little... What's my other half, though, is what I want to know. I'd you say do. you're uh, half Chinese, half, like, Hawaiian or something. Mm. What? Jewish. Are you, yeah. Eastern European. You're a big expert. That would make you a Jewish. <laughs> but I'm not a Yenta, okay? <laughs> See, some pictures you look really hot, and then the other pictures, sometimes you look like you got a butterface. Oh, a butterface! Oh, now there hey, you Robin, look hot. Are you with, are you within distance where you can smack them for me? <laughs> See, now there you look hot. But in Which the one are you looking at? The one where you got your hands over your boobs. Oh yeah. But then, like the picture before that, you look a little funky. Oh. Like, look, look at that. Yeah, I can't That's look good cute. all the time. You think she's cute there? Yeah. I don't know, man. I think there's a. I want to know what she really looks like. Oh yeah, that's nice. <laughs> there you look like Fran Drescher. Oh, she's not, come on. That's not an insult. She's a good-looking woman. Yeah, she, she's actually cool. I like her. Now, let me see the next picture. Okay, let's see if you can guess my height and my measurements, since you're probably... I'm going to say you're about 5'5". Five five. Mm-hmm. Am I right? No. I told you. I'm 5'2". I'm, I'm a little girl. Yeah, you look small. But like, I am proportioned, though. Yeah, you look like a, yeah, like a nicely proportioned midget. Like, you don't have sausage <laughs> fingers. <A> midget? <laughs> yeah. Hey, what? Well, little I'd girls say are good for some things. <laughs> Thirty-four fake boobs. Those are fakes. Yeah. Nope. Real? Nope. Yep. Wow. I'm a na I'm natural. I'm an actual uh, thirty-four C cup. Hmm. And that's good for being half Chinese because hello, hello. you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thirty-four, twenty-five, forty, but I don't know. Oh, ah, man, not for Ron Jeremy. That's a turn off. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my gosh, Robin. That guy would not let go of me. All right, I so was... seriously, your whole angle is you're a masturbation expert, and then you teach women how to touch themselves, and then, and then, you, also... go... mm -hmm. and then you teach guys how I to do. touch women. I do. Because the thing is, a lot of women still have, there's a lot of barriers up. And Tell me some... something I don't know. Okay. When you're going to be with a, a new woman, what would you say, Howard, is the first thing that you should take into consideration? The fact that she probably isn't attracted to me. Oh. <laughs> you know what? Personality and character go way beyond looks. So. Right, I'm going to say, uh, you mean sexually what I should be with? I think you have to like sort of uh, like move slow. Okay, you're good. You're good. That's definitely one of the first things. You've like a lot of guys rush. Yeah, they jump on you. Like, I know yeah. a chick was telling me that there was this guy that she really liked, and she went out with him a couple of times, and then two seconds later, he, like, put his hand on her boob. Right. Uh -huh. and, like, that's it. She was out the door. Or even if you, you go to kiss a girl, you don't jam your tongue into her exactly. mouth. Exactly. Yeah, but all right, assume we know all that. Like, we, we got some intelligence. Well, you, it's, it's happening it, out there. This, this is the main thing. It's Guys, like you said, they go too fast. So my first step, I tell guys, is slow down and relax and be a generous lover. Yeah, think like a chick. Like, yeah, put like, your ego aside. Pretend you're a lesbian. And me, <laughs> yeah, try giving. Yeah, pretend you don't even have a penis. <laughs> pretend you're another chick with a vagina and you'll probably do pretty good. Or do what I do. What's Say, that? who cares if the girl gets off? Just oh. bang her. Yeah, that's what okay. I do. And then leave. And leave. Yeah. Don't look well, for a second date. And right. That's a good food. point, Howard. And, and this is what I tell guys. I understand that attitude, and you're absolutely right. Most guys, or many men, say that. But here's the thing. They're also asking me, Sadie, how do I get more sex? How do I get my wife and my girlfriend to give me oral pleasure? I want to do it more, and she's not into me. And you know what I tell them? I tell, say, them well, tell them to stop paying the bills. <laughs> <laughs> that's one way. All right, so step one is pretend you care. Yes. Okay. Pretend you care. <laughs> slow down. Right. Take take yourself out of the equation. It's not about you. It's about your lover. Mm. Okay, that's step number one. Think well, about I've talked generous. to many men, and i got to tell you something. A lot of us don't care anymore. A lot of us are like, you know what? I'm going to do this. I'm going to get off. And it's up to you to get off. Hurry up. Right. Stop taking so much time. What's your problem? Men are not caring anymore? Yeah, well, these guys are just saying, you know what? Okay, so it takes her a long time to get off. Why is that my problem? But Get off quicker. Is it fun to like just be with a person? Not no, really. No, no. Okay. it's fun to finish. <laughs> I gotta go to work in the morning. Oh man! But All then right, you're not getting talking, it as often as you want. We're talking no. to some real that lovers here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. So. Casanovas. So. All right, so what you're saying is if we really want to please our women, take our time, move slowly. 
and be generous. Okay, now step number gentle. two. Yeah. Step number two is to talk to her. Okay, this is yeah. all about uh, getting oh, what you want. All the tough stuff. <laughs> oh, talk to her. Yeah. <laughs> what are we going to talk about, the ball game? <laughs> uh, you want to know. You like what, talk, talk dirty? About, about, no, you want to talk to her about what she likes and how much pressure she likes when you touch her and where exactly does she like to be touched. Yeah, I, I do that with Beth, and she gets embarrassed. She's like, I'm not going to tell you. Don't you know? What is it, oh. a secret? We've been together three and a half years. Don't you know? And you know, seriously, like, you know how women, like, I've heard this advice before. Go and ask the woman what she likes. Well, then she thinks you're a total loser. And it, no, I guess maybe no. it's the way you ask. Yeah, maybe, what do you, you ask, like? But some, some women actually appreciate it, because if you show interest in her pleasure... That's going to really turn a girl on, and she's going to want to give you more in return. I don't think she's saying it's sitting at a table and say, hey, baby, what do you like? It's like when you're making love to her, when you're touching her, do you like that? Well, you oh, know yeah. what? This exactly, is really... Robin. Right. Oh, please. This, oh. this no, is really vague. In the room, no. <laughs> this is very vague. Okay, look. How much time should I spend kissing you before I move to your boobs? <laughs> I would say... Okay. Okay, Howard, here's your answer. I would say act as if your lady has a chastity belt on for at least 20 minutes and touch her and kiss her everywhere else on her body. All right, so you're saying, like, kiss her for, like, five minutes. <laughs> okay, then, like, you got to break it down. And then, like, don't rub the boobs for more than three minutes because I know you guys get sore. <laughs> and then, like, what did I do? Like, rub your belly and thighs for about seven minutes? Oh, my that, so, that sounds good to me. And touch your ass a little bit before I go for the main goalpost? Squeeze, squeeze it real good and make yeah. sure you well, kiss our the... necks, too. What is the and, goal post? I well, mean, are the, you talking the, the big goal, V? You know, the goal, <laughs> but you know. couldn't you do something orally before? No, no, no. What I do is I, I just <laughs> rub around there for a while, uh -huh. like in the general area, and then like maybe I'll go down, kiss the thighs a little bit. Uh -huh. What about the belly on the way down? Yeah, yeah, I know yeah. to do that. You do that too? Do you yeah. play with her hair too, Howard? Which hair? <laughs> my well, girl's hair. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I play with her hair. I like to play. I like to play with my girl's back hair. <laughs> yeah, I. Uh... <laughs> oh, that's gross, buddy. <laughs> okay, all right. So the next step. So you've slowed down. You're kissing yeah. her. You're touching her. You're giving her all the foreplay that we're always begging for. Yeah. So you're putting out right now, even if it's against your will. You're putting out because watch what's going to happen at the end here. The next step, the chastity belt comes off. And all you have to do now is decide how you're going to pleasure her. You're either going to do your hands, or you're going to use a toy, or you're going to use your mouth. Hmm. And by all means, use all three. If it's some hoe I just picked up, no way I'm using my mouth. <laughs> okay, I can uh, understand that. I'll use my hand. I'm not going to go get a toy the first time I'm with a chick. That's uh -huh. for losers. I mean, that, that's not until you're like you're. You got to know a girl. Time. To do you got to know a girl a little bit. <laughs> yeah, oh I, I agree. You definitely don't. <laughs> like, like even myself, people have said, "God, said it must be hard to date you." I bet guys are intimidated, and I, I say, you know, when I'm not at work, I'm, I'm just a normal girl. And oh when I start seeing daddy. a new guy, I don't pull out any toys. I don't, I don't pull out any of my knowledge. I just, I just explore as I would anybody new that didn't know everything. Lou, I you're on the air. Get, get this broad off the air, man. She's killing me. Hey, what, are you, what are you doing? That's right. Okay. Well, TJ, no, I, I, TJ no, you're on the air with uh, uh, Sadie Allison. Uh, she go, go to tickle, ticklekitty.com. Yes, uh, TJ. Hey, get that brought off there for real. Why, TJ? For, I mean, she either going to come when I come or come when I come back. All right, there you go. That makes sense. Interesting. Yeah. All right, we're giving you, we're giving you the gong. Listen. You, you, you know some stuff, but I know more than you because I don't know if you read in the paper, but Angie Everhart said I'm the best lover she ever had. <laughs> then you must have done all this. And I did all of this. I bet you went real slow with her. Oh, yes. And I bet you paid attention to her pleasure and gave her multiple orgasms. I love you. Okay, see, that's the problem. Most guys aren't doing that for us. I know what I'm doing. And I know you, know you it, do, Howard. And you know what it comes down to? What? If a chick really you. digs you... Mm -hmm. And really thinks you're hot, you can do no wrong. Yeah, but if you really dig a girl, you're doing this too. That's right. Right. And it's all the guys that aren't digging their girls that much when when they're with where they're just dating someone. I'm the king of all labia. <laughs> 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 yeah. All right, listen, Sadie, what do you got? A book you're peddling? Yeah. Right. Yes, I do. I've got a book <laughs> That's called what down. All right, Hey Now. Listen. All right, I, hey now. Let me I, <laughs> let me let me give you a plug. Ticklekitty dot com. If you want to learn how to yank your meat, ladies, or whatever you call that thing your you got. Your lady meat. Your lady meat. 
<laughs> Go to ticklekitty.com and Sadie will give you some good tips. And if uh, if any of your listeners want to learn how women like to be touched, they can pick up a free report, and it's called Simple Touches Women Crave, and they can go right to my site and get it for free. Compliments on me. How would I get, like, a lesson from you? Like, let's say I want to learn how to touch broads. Uh-huh. Let's say I want to, you know, like a tutorial. Okay, well, Do you do that? I, I can set those up one-on-one, -on -one, absolutely. But do you my do that? I do. I, I'd actually like to come out to New York and show you personally, Howard. Yeah, I would like to do that off the air, though. <laughs> in, a, in a room alone with you. Well, well, we could talk about that, but we'll have to check in with Beth and my boyfriend. You see. Please. Do you got? Do you guys actually like have like a, a room where you go to and you teach a guy how to touch a woman and like he can like experiment? I have not done that with a couple because it's a little sensitive. I do most of my work. People get tickle your fancy and they read it because it uh, is the other team's playbook for guys. That'd be high. Right? I'm pretty sure you can get this brought alone and she'll yeah she'll she'll, she'll yeah. handle your gherkin. <laughs> All right, Sadie Allison Sex God Toolkit. Go to tick, ticklekitty.com. That's T-I-C-K-L-E-K-I-T-T. -T -T. We know how to spell tickle. Don't, yeah, but don't talk down people. to us. <laughs> ticklekitty.com. Thanks, Sadie. Thank you, Howard. Thanks, Robin. Bye-bye. Have a good day, guys. Not a bad-looking broad. I took a look at her picture. Oh, Sadie. Oh, Sadie. Sadie. What's oh, that, Sadie? Oh, my Debbie. Mm. <laughs> What's I that, it's Harry? Mm, I love you, Bambina. Mm, uh, caro. Ti voglio bene, ti voglio assai, ti voglio far amore con te. Oh, my Debbie. Oh, uh, Debbie, Debbie, Debbie. Right. Hello, my Debbie. That chick was telling us everything. We move slow, all that stuff. Hello, hello. Well, actually, in her book, she does tell you, like, literally, like, eight different ways to touch a broad to get her off. But and do you agree? Let me take a look. Uh, Kiss the neck. Stro stroking style. Yeah, I know all that. They include the figure. Oh, make the figure eight on a woman. Do the alphabet. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We've heard uh, all up that. Up and down, rolling between the fingers, circular rub. Talk to her. Three finger technique. Stroking the sides of that thing we can't find. <laughs> if you find it. If you find it, you can find the side of it. <laughs> if I find it, I'm not letting go of it. <laughs> I hold on to it. Like it's like riding a bull. <laughs> Like it's the horn of a saddle. <clears throat> yeah. Massage, tapping, and light rub. Better to use lube when masturbating. It's a big deal. But I mean, you know what? If I'm with a new chick and she's got to use lube, I'm out of there. When I'm out of the room. Need lube. And, but what chick needs that? You need lube. Everybody with lube. People are afraid to touch themselves. If a girl needs lube to touch herself... That's a real problem. Yeah. She's an ice princess. Sadie says a guy does not necessarily have to orgasm during sex. Who's she kidding? What? He should concentrate his attentions on his woman. And why is that? <laughs> what, 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 what's in it for me? Will you stop it? Don't Are I want to... You, you mean, you mean I don't want to be pleased? A guy doesn't have to orgasm during sex. Have you ever had sex where you did an orgasm? No. No, me neither. <laughs> what's the point? What's How's that happen? problem? It's important for men to move slowly with women. Yeah, trust me. Size up the situation. Where's she going? Move as quick as you want. Just get into it. If you're enjoying it, she'll enjoy it. I'm sick of all this. You are well, that's sir. the bottom line. Apparently, a lot of people who don't enjoy each other are trying to get it on. I'm right? <laughs> that's what it sounds like. I'm just like, like, I'm going for it. You know what? And if, and if I blow it real fast... That's a compliment to you. <laughs> yeah, I find chicks do enjoy if if they get you off. They they love that. Oh, sure. Because they feel like they've accomplished. This girl I was with post marriage, I couldn't hold out for more than a second. I was like, "You're hot." <laughs> yeah, that's got to make them happy. Come yeah, on. I said, "I'm gonna be honest with you. Two times we've done this within 20 minutes, and I can't even hold it for a second. <laughs> You're hot. You're too goddamn hot. Congratulations. Yeah, congratulations." Congratulations, I mean, I know you didn't have an orgasm. You but just won a prize. Yeah, but you're turning me on. Congratulations, honey. Now we can move on to the pizza. You um, have won the hot <laughs> Yeah. Prize. No, now we can move into getting you out the door. Yeah, now, uh, now we it's can work on getting you, you a to cab. Go. It's time for you to go home. <laughs> yeah, now, we can, now we can call you a town car. Uh, <laughs> this be like a game show. Guess what you just <laughs> A trip to the car. Honey, I finished. Now I'm going to introduce you to the elevator. Oh, boy. Hey, Mike. Oh, no, Mike. Yeah, Rich. 
Hey, Rich. Howard, you guys, she made some valid points. You guys are missing the point of the whole thing. If you're not taking care of your girlfriend on a regular basis, she's no longer going to take care of you because it's no fun for her. So she's making a valid point. What do you mean, so that you're not going to get it anymore? So instead of getting it twenty times a week, you'll you get, get it. Before. She's not going anywhere. Believe me. She's going to go. I'm telling you. <clears throat> I've been through the situation before. Take care of the girl first, and then you last about ten seconds when you go in. All you right. Take Thank care you. Of her orally. This guy seems to know something. All right. He should write a book. No, I always try to take care of a broad. Well, that's a broad you care about. Yeah. I always do that. If you don't care, you're not caring about anything. Sometimes my woman says, just give it to me. I'm not even, I don't even need to. She's already up. ready. She's ready, she goes. She goes, I'm ready. Let's, let's skip all the small stuff. That's because she's uh, been doing her part. She's into you. Yeah. She doesn't need me. If a chick's into you, she shouldn't need all that, uh, that goddamn attention. Sometimes you just happen to get all that attention. Right. But, you know, you've got to be into the person who's giving it to you. Yeah. Thank you. Sometimes, if you're not into it, <laughs> nothing is ever going to happen. That's right. You little bitch. I know my woman digs me because she's like, just come on. Let's get to the main event. I not have already. been in situations where I don't care what the, but the person could have stood on his head. It wasn't going to happen. Right. Wasn't into him. That, that's what I was trying to say, Sadie Allison. Sadie Allison. <laughs> and there's a guy here. Jeez, I want to play voicemail. Who's this guy? Howard, why don't you break first? Because I want to just uh, tell you a little bit about him. Oh, can I play voicemail first? Yeah. I mean, at some point, Dennis Rodman's calling in. We hope. Who wants to say he's sober? He's burned us before. Yeah. I mean, if he's really sober, he would be on, <laughs> on the phone. phone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, we got some voicemail here. A lot of weird stuff. This is, uh, <clears throat> I don't know. Who, oh, oh, this is Jeff the Vomit guy. Oh, that guy. Pussy He's what? calling you names? <laughs> no, no, no. I got the wrong one. That's coming up. Hey, this is Jeff the Vomit guy. All you devoted Howard Stern listeners, listen up. I'm looking for a, cho a few choice women out there who would like to be nauseous and throw up all over me. <laughs> Jeff the Vomit guy has spoken with sincerity, I mind you. Okay, looking forward to it. You know, he makes that request like every six months and yeah. gets no response. <laughs> he gets zero response. There's no chicks that want to vomit on this guy. Odd. He's really gross. Chicks are just not into that. But he'll call. This is now yeah. going on 10 years, I, I think. Every six months. Yeah, well, maybe one day he'll find his dream girl. Crazy Alice called him, boy. She's got it in for me and you. What happened? I can't see you. No, I'm, I don't think I'm ever get up to see y'all for a while because of my money problem. But I appreciate you stepping my email, what I feel in my soul. And when it comes to that cock-sucking Howard, I like him as a person, but as a man and an ignorant, stupid, Holocaust bitch, he talk, he talk crazy. The only one that really makes the sense on that show most of the time is Fred. And that's one that doesn't do much. And when it comes to poor people, Bill, rich people, Bill Tucker, who brought down the mother. World Trade Center, those beautiful buildings, they won't repair the same way like they were before. So when you open up your big lip mouth to how I'm going to treat you like a bad kid. You listen to yourself and think what you're saying because rich people are responsible for those buildings going down. And Osama Bin Laden wasn't the only one who did that sh**. He had to find that because he only got $300,000, a million dollars. He can't find that sh**. There's so many dickheads in this country did it too. So think before you open up your big nose mouth, okay? And big t Robin, you're getting pretty. You're looking pretty good, bitch. I'm jealous of your lifestyle. I can always lose weight, but I would never have the money like you and that bitch that like me is, okay? Take care, Casey. I love you like a brother, okay? Fred, I know you don't have much to say, but I'm glad I hear your voice once in a while, okay? Take care. I read a Dutch, you kike. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Why does she like Fred? I think I, she thinks I, Fred's a loser like her. Oh, exactly. maybe. I That's what know. it is. I didn't understand the entire phone call. I'll let that pass, by the way. Yeah, Fred, d don't take it as such a compliment that Crazy Alice likes you. <laughs> so but, you're just mad because she likes me and she doesn't like <laughs> yeah. you. How, what, what was she screaming about September 11th? Like, we got the wrong people or something? What is she talking know. about? Rich people are responsible for it. Because oh. they financed Osama Bin Laden. Yeah. Okay. I understand Crazy Alice. I'm glad for you, Artie. <laughs>
That's the new sign-off, a river dare cake. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A river dare cake. He, he does like you, though. As a person. Right, but I don't understand. But she thinks you're a Holocaust bitch. Yeah. But as a man. All right, here's a, uh, you know, who ha we haven't heard from in a long time, and he just called in all of a sudden, was Riley Martin, the guy who's abducted by aliens? Yes, you know what? We were playing a promo with him in it the other day, and I wondered what happened to him. Hello, Casey. This is Riley Martin. Why does everyone say hello, Casey? I she guess they all think they're talking to KC on that machine. Hello, KC. Hello, KC. I seen your poster. <laughs> KCposter.com. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he... Let's put my voice on there. So people say, hello, Howard. Yeah. <laughs> hello, Howard, KC. <laughs> hello, Howard and KC. KC or Howard. <laughs> so confused. What? Is that your phone number? Yeah, they call oh, my voice. Oh, okay, right. okay. I got it. How you been doing, big guy? This morning, some kind of biochemical was released into the subway of New York City. If you remember correctly, the last time I spoke to Howard and he insisted that I give him a prediction, uh, I explained to him that this would be the next mechanism of terrorism in your city. <laughs> now, I'm not asking you guys to believe me. I'm not your f psychic friend. <laughs> but listen to what I have to say at least I think we should do an in-studio broadcast again I'd appreciate it if you'd pass this along to Howard tell him I love him pass this along to him uh, and uh he sounds like Sulu he sounds like he's dying yeah a little actually. bit <laughs> I've been in contact with the captain of the Excelsior <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it's captain. me <laughs> <laughs> We should make a tape of him versus Sulu. Dueling. Hello. Dueling deep voices. <laughs> Hello. Believe it or not, this is the next mechanism of uh, terrorism. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, a biochemical is in the subway. Now, a biochemical is substance. There. Why is, when, is the, when was the biochemical released? Well, let me see. I have a lot of information. And it does not come from this earth. <laughs> from these people in the sky who give me this information. A lot of things on my head, man. And uh, I think we should do uh, another show. <laughs> it should be uh, interesting. Yeah, to you. You understand? Uh, pass this along to him. Oh, boy. Now, let me ask you this. What if he's telling the truth that he really is in touch with aliens? <laughs> None of us believe him. And biochemicals are being released into well, the subway. Well, he will have the last laugh, won't he? I'll tell you what. I think, I think he's nuts, but I'm not going on the sea train today. <laughs> And there's one from uh, Raymond Norman. Oh. Uh, then I really do have to take Negro a break. woman of the South? Yeah. Yes, uh, good morning, Casey. This is Raymond Norman, and I hope you had a lovely uh, Thanksgiving. Um, it's Friday, and it's the day after. This is the guy with boobs? Yes. He, he, he grew boobs. And he's always screaming about Oprah. The Thanksgiving, and so I'm calling to let you and Howard know. Tell Howard that uh, Uma Thurman also and um, Ben Affleck are coming out with a movie next month, December 25th, called Paycheck. And if that particular movie gets any ratings, as far as a high rating of people coming into the movie theater to see Paycheck, it won't be because of Ben Affleck. I can assure you that. Tell them that the people will be pulling because of the fact a big star, Uma Thurman. Tell them the reason that people will be pulling for that particular movie, and it's called Paycheck, <laughs> star starring Uma Thurman and then ask like that the reason that movie probably will get some good ratings will be because of Uma Thurman <laughs> and not Ben Affleck. Gay guys, gay oh. guys care about everything. Oh my God! Now, Howard, I love all of y'all. Tell Robin hello. Bye again. This is Raymond Norman, and again, I hope you had a lovely Thanksgiving. Well, Bye. thank you, Raymond. Same to you. Thank you, Raymond Norman. We have the best voicemail. We do. I, I have a whole bunch more. Oh, that's great. But, uh, this movie paycheck, it will be the responsibility. It's it's going to be Uma Thurman if anybody goes to see it, not Ben Affleck. I could assure you of that. <laughs> but as high ratings in terms of ratings of people going into the theater. <laughs> <laughs> what? What are you talking about? As far as people going into the theater, <laughs> rating it. If with, they do. If those ratings are high, it will be because of Uma Thurman. You know, we'll be able to tell by the box office. <laughs> yeah, just <laughs> you get to say if a movie makes a lot of money. Yeah, people right. go to see the movie. All right, there's Raymond Norman. I got I to gotta take... What is it? You know, Robin's boyfriend called up over Thanksgiving and was, was getting frisky. Really? What What? Uh, one is that? Yeah. Um, 11? Right there. Robin 
Oh, the guy who's in yeah, love with Robin? Yeah, the racist guy who loves me. Uh, it's, it's a love Robin, hate. my Africanist princess bitch, honey. <laughs> Listen, baby, you've lost enough weight now, and now it's time for you to get greased up <laughs> and for me to go down there and do my magic on you. <laughs> I want to get down there on you and really dig in, baby. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm going to put my ham hands on your ass like your pap used to. Hey, he must have read uh, Sadie Allison's new book. I guess. Yeah. He's gonna. He's gonna dig in. He's gonna dig in. <laughs> I bet he moves slow. I wish you would do that, guy. Oh please. Just for the show. Can I choose somebody for you to do? <laughs> <laughs> Crazy Alice. <laughs> hey, uh, Dennis Rodman's on the phone. Should oh. I take Dennis and then break, or? We have no choice. You know him. I have to take Dennis. Hey, Dennis. Yep. What's happening? <laughs> what's up? Howard. Oh, hey, Howard. So, what what happened? What's you, going on? You got to prove to everybody you're straight now, right? A straight what? Well, you want to get him back into the basketball, right? Oh, well, you know how it is, Howard. You had a couple of run-ins uh, that caused some problems, right? <laughs> <laughs> You guys always got to talk about stuff like that, right? But I thought you no, were... we got to find out why, what you're doing, what you're up to. I want to see you get back into the game of professional basketball. But you got to prove to everybody that you're ready for action. Well, I don't have to prove to anybody. I'll take Howard. <laughs> yeah, I just, just got to get back in. Uh, just, just one of those things, you know how it is. What well, happened? What happened? Well, what, what's going on? Uh, how come no team has picked you up yet? Well, I don't know. I guess, I guess it's my... Uh, <clears throat> I guess it's my charisma, you know how it is. Your charisma? Or do yeah, you need the money? Charisma. Everyone was asking, is Dennis broke? They always ask that. You have money? They always ask that. But this is not a thing like where you need the money. No, you already asked me that, Howard, once before. No, it ain't about me going back and playing just because of money. So what happened? I know you were close so, to getting back into the game, and then... We I guess, read about a car accident. That you crashed a car or something. Oh, uh, it wasn't a car, it was a motorcycle. Oh, that's right. That's right. Somebody else's motorcycle, wasn't it? Yeah, well, <clears throat> my motorcycle, their motorcycle, doesn't really matter. It was just the fact that <clears throat> I'm having too much fun as usual. Yes. Right. Now, did that scare away the basketball teams? Well, I don't think that scared away basketball teams. I just think that, you know, <clears throat> people just scared of Dennis Rodman, period, just because of the way I am. But know. did you decide that you needed to do something to make people... Aware that you're serious about wanting to come back? Well, by crashing a motorcycle? Yeah, that's no, no, no. I meant after that. You say, you know what? Let me go. Because I, I heard you were, you know, now not drinking and stuff. Well, I don't, I don't think that, that had anything to do with me about uh, trying to be serious about basketball. I think that I was trying to do that before all this, uh, this, uh, <clears throat> these problems started to happen. So. It's like every time I try to get back into basketball, something always seemed to come up. Where, so where are you now? I'm at home right now, Howard. In Vegas or in, in California? Uh, you know, uh, in, uh, LA. in uh, L.A. I'm in L.A. You're in L.A. Hmm. And and so I heard that John Sally was mad at you. Is that true? Well, who's not mad at Dennis Rob one point? <laughs> I'm not mad at you. You know, everybody's got everybody's got their own opinion about Dennis Rodman. He's doing this, he's doing that. Damn, I wish everybody got off my damn back and let me try to fulfill this this uh, last you know this last ditch effort to try to. Uh, See, I heard John Sally wrote a letter saying that you should be back in pro basketball, and he vouched for you. And then when you crashed the motorcycle, he got pissed because it made him look foolish. Is that true? Well, you know. <laughs> I don't. I'm only 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 about that hour. I think that, uh, so you're still friends with John Sally? Yeah, I'm still friends. I saw Have you talked at, to him? I saw him in Vegas uh, a couple weeks ago. Are you depressed because Carmen Electra is now married? Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> you were happy for her. I'm, I'm happy for her. All right. Did she invite you to the wedding? Well, I don't need to be there to be happy for her. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad that she got. I'm, I'm depressed that she's that married. married. <laughs> I am really depressed she's married. Really? Yeah. Well, but I, I'm wondering, then, why, Dennis, are we talking to you today? What's going on? Yeah, I thought you were calling in to show everyone how, like, together you are. Well, I am together. I'm, I can't, well, if <laughs> calling into you, Howard, don't mean that I'm together. Well. A lot, people, a lot of people call you, don't think they're together. I think they just come in just to try to, to make a name for themselves. That's why they call you. 
So be straight with me. Uh, is there a team that's going to put you on? Because I would like to see you play again. I, I would enjoy seeing Dennis Rodman back out on the court. Is there a chance that we'll see that? Well, I would love to be on the court. I would love to go out there and show people that. Uh, you still that, have it. Uh, you know, just just to show people that uh, I, can, I can still play. It. I can, uh, the, the game. I think the game still needs entertainment. But uh, you know, the way the league's going right now, I think the league is so diluted and so. Uh, so washed out just because uh, you see it's all these teams. I mean, it's not really exciting to see to watch basketball. I think that if I come back in a game to a team that needs to uh, to, to to sell tickets to to, uh, to get a little life into the, to, to their city or to the team, hey, I'm I'm willing to do that. Are, is anybody talking to you? Well, you know, <laughs> beside us, yeah. <laughs> uh, I, any I, team? Yeah, you know, it's, it's, well, <laughs> those teams those teams are interested in me to uh, come play, but I got to get that up. Uh, as they call it, the black ball away from my face. Right. The black ball away from your face. Yeah. You wouldn't have said that. What does that mean? Oh, come on, Howard. Robin. Get with it. What's the matter get with you? it. Come on now. Get come with on, it, Robin. <laughs> now, are you still married? Yeah, we're still married. Could you bang Christina Aguilera if you wanted to? Christine Aguilera. I told you about that story years ago, right? When she was like, I think like 17, 18. You banged her? No, I didn't. I didn't she, was a little, she was a little intoxicated. And you gave her oral? Oh, stop. Uh, she was a little intoxicated back then. It was in Atlanta, uh, Atlanta, Georgia. But you didn't do her? No, you know, she was a little too young. Mm. But she was throwing herself at you is what you're saying. Well, I was, well she was throwing herself and throwing up. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get a few fingers dirty? Is that what you're telling me? No. Uh, come on, no, man. No, 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 did you hear no, no. she was throwing, throwing, all that, throwing you know. up? Oh, I heard that. <laughs> so, Dennis Rodman is on the season. Rodman on the rebound tonight and tomorrow night on uh, at midnight on ESPN. What is that? What's that's that? A, oh, yeah. That's, that's a little mini series that's coming out on ESPN with, uh, showing people that I'm trying to, trying to uh, make an effort to uh, to come back into basketball. You know, as, as you, it's going to show people that, uh, you know, there is a uh, before and after he was drinking and not drinking. Uh, ah. So this is a reality show with Dennis Rodman trying to make it back into basketball. Yeah, trying, trying to, you know, you know, it's not like Michael Jordan where he just, uh, they kiss his ass and give him the red carpet. Hey, Michael, nobody, you 100 years old. Bring your ass back. We love it. <laughs> hey, Dennis, take a few phone calls, will you? Dennis is too funny. Take a few phone calls. Hey, those phone calls always will be uh, those uh, those assholes in New York. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Let's see what people have to say. No. I hope people are pulling for you. I do. Oh, uh, I doubt it. Let's see. Let's let's see if there's some nice people on the phone. Hi. Stu, you're on with uh, Dennis Rodman. Yeah, hey, it's Stu, Brad Pitt's brother. Dennis, how you doing, baby? What a rebounder. Yes, he is. You are the man, buddy. Listen, I wanted to know, though, forget all of that stuff about basketball and you're showing up. Do you have a mirror at home? Because you're a scary nigger, man. Oh, oh come on. Come on, Howard. Let me ask the guy. He knows what nigger means. No, oh, stop Please. it. That's ben, not ben, fair. Ask, answer me, man. Tell me. You Tell me. You're, you're scary, buddy. What do you want to say to him? Ah, oh, forget it. Guys, Dennis. That guy doesn't helpful. have anything to say, Howard. Dennis, will there ever be peace in this world? Oh, not for Dennis Rodman. I mean, you know, like I say, Howard, every time I come on your show... You know, you got some of the, uh, the weirdest and, and the dickheads of all times going to your show <laughs> asking the craziest, you know. Racism so, you know, I, is I, I, I a... Don't, I have no problem asking the question where people going to sit there and just say the, the dumbest, you know. Stuff. <laughs> Stuff, yeah. Yes. Well, you're right. I, I apologize for that. And you're trying to get a question out of the guy. Yeah. Well, you're not, not going <laughs> to get that. You're, you're not going to let him go. <laughs> what would you really like to say, sir? I was trying to get an intelligent comment out of the guy. <laughs> well, hey, how are you not going to... Let's go to Ryan. Ryan, what's on your mind for Dennis Rodman? Uh, good morning, King of All Media. Well, thank you. Ryan from Cleveland. Listen here, Dennis. I just want to ask you a question. Yeah, I know you're a very talented basketball player, and uh, I actually just wanted to know what is wrong with you psychologically because you've done some of the freakiest stuff that I think I've ever seen from anybody in in, uh, in the limelight. And you're uh, you're a great basketball player. But it's just like, I don't know, this lifestyle of yours is... Um, oh, what do you mean? He's get, living... That get you off, or... Well, that's a valid question. I mean, right. Dennis, do you think that there's something wrong with you mentally? I know, seriously, because I'm usually calling Robin a gorilla or something. I'm asking you a serious question, Dennis. <laughs> what do you got on your mind? Yeah, really. Robin, Dennis... you know I love you. Nothing personal, baby. Just for the show. All right. Go ahead, Dennis. Well, okay, let, let Dennis respond, if you think that's a legitimate question. Dennis, is something wrong with you psychologically? There's something wrong with me psychologically. I don't think anything's wrong with me. You know, when I, all the things I've done in my career are off the court, on the court. It doesn't really matter. I think that, 
you know, I've done things to uh, to make money. I've done things to, for people to get all excited. I've done things just like you, Howard. Yeah, just what has like he you. done wrong? I mean, uh, he well, banged he Carmen has, Electra. What's wrong with that? He has done some things that make people uh, get. I mean, he's he's constantly being arrested and and well, in it, court. And, I mean, <laughs> those aren't the things that normally happen to people who are you know doing fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> well, you know, I. Uh, like I say, Robin, you always seem to put the, 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 that, that, that bright light in my life, always. Well, Dennis, you feel you're a victim, right? I mean, you feel a lot of...